Swedish SVN Scar is a North Germanic language, spoken natively by about 9 million people predominantly in Sweden and parts of Finland, where it has equal legal standing with Finnish. It is largely mutually intelligible with Norwegian and Danish. Along with the other North Germanic languages, Swedish is a descendant of Old Norse. The common language of the Germanic peoples living in Scandinavia during the Viking era. It is currently the largest of the North Germanic languages by number of speakers. Standard Swedish, spoken by most Swedes, is the national language that evolved from the Central Swedish dialects in the 19th century and was well established by the beginning of the 20th century. While distinct regional varieties descended from the older rural dialects still exist, the spoken and written language is uniform and standardized. The standard word order is, as in most Germanic languages, V2, which means that the finite verb appears in second position of a declarative main clause. Swedish morphology is similar to English, that is, words have comparatively few inflections. There are two genders, no grammatical cases, and a distinction between plural and singular. Older analyses posit the cases nominative and genitive and there are some remains of distinct accusative and dative forms as well. Adjectives are compared as in English, and are also inflected according to gender, number and definiteness. The definiteness of nouns is marked primarily through suffixes, complemented with separate definite and indefinite articles. The prosody features both stress and in most dialects tonal qualities. The language has a comparatively large vowel inventory. Swedish is also notable for the voiceless dorsopalatal velar fricative, a highly variable consonant phoneme. Classification Swedish is an Indo-European language belonging to the North Germanic branch of the Germanic languages. In the established classification, it belongs to the East Scandinavian languages together with Danish, separating it from the West Scandinavian languages, consisting of Faroese, Icelandic and Norwegian. However, more recent analyses divide the North Germanic languages into two groups. Insular Scandinavian, and Continental Scandinavian. Based on mutual intelligibility due to heavy influence of East Scandinavian on Norwegian during the last millennium and divergence from both Faroese, and Icelandic, by many general criteria of mutual intelligibility, the Continental Scandinavian languages could very well be considered dialects of a common Scandinavian language. However, because of several hundred years of sometimes quite intense rivalry between Denmark and Sweden, including a long series of wars from the 16th to 18th centuries, and the nationalist ideas that emerged during the late 19th and early 20th centuries, the languages have separate orthographies, dictionaries, grammars, and regulatory bodies. Danish, Norwegian, and Swedish are thus from a linguistic perspective more accurately described as a dialect continuum of Scandinavian, and some of the dialects, such as those on the border between Norway and Sweden, especially parts of Bohuslän, Dalsland, a western Varmland, western Dalinar, Hargedalen, Jamtland and Scania, could be described as intermediate dialects of the national standard languages. History Old Norse in the 8th century, the common Germanic language of Scandinavia, Proto-Norse, had undergone some changes and evolved into Old Norse. This language began to undergo new changes that did not spread to all of Scandinavia, which resulted in the appearance of two similar dialects, Old West Norse and Old East Norse. The dialects of Old East Norse that were spoken in Sweden are called Runic Swedish while the dialects of Denmark are referred to as Runic Danish. The dialects are described as Runic because the main body of text appears in the Runic alphabet. Unlike Proto-Norse, which was written with the Elder Fudark alphabet, Old Norse was written with the Younger Fudark alphabet, which had only 16 letters. Because the number of runes was limited, some runes were used for a range of phonemes. 
such as the rune for the value which was also used for the vowels O, O and Y, and the rune for I which was also used for E. From 1200 onwards, the dialects in Denmark began to diverge from those of Sweden. The innovations spread unevenly from Denmark which created a series of minor dialectal boundaries, or isoglosses, ranging from Zealand in the south to Norland, Osterbotten and northwestern Finland in the north. An early change that separated runic Danish from the other dialects of Old East Norse was the change of the diphthong ear to the monophthong ear cute, as in stay and to same t acute and n stone. This is reflected in runic inscriptions where the older read stain and the later stin. There was also a change of o as in doth into a long open o as in doth dead. This change is shown in runic inscriptions as a change from Tauth into Tuth. Moreover, the Oidithong changed into a long, close O, as in the Old Norse word for island. By the end of the period, these innovations had affected most of the runic Swedish-speaking area as well, with the exception of the dialect spoken north and east of Maladalen where the Dithongs still exist in remote areas. Old Swedish Old Swedish is the term used for the medieval Swedish language. The start date is usually set to 1225 since this is the year that Vastgo Talagen is believed to have been compiled for the first time. It is among the most important documents of the period written in Latin script and the oldest Swedish law codes. Old Swedish is divided into Alder Fornsvenska and Ungri Fornsvenska. Older and younger Old Swedish important outside influences during this time came with the firm establishment of the Christian Church and various monastic orders, introducing many Greek and Latin loanwords. With the rise of Hanseatic power in the late 13th and early 14th century, Middle Low German became very influential. The Hanseatic League provided Swedish commerce and administration with a large number of Low German-speaking immigrants. Many became quite influential members of Swedish medieval society, and brought terms from their native languages into the vocabulary. Besides a great number of loanwords for such areas as warfare, trade and administration, general grammatical suffixes and even conjunctions were imported. The League also brought a certain measure of influence from Danish. Early Old Swedish was markedly different from the modern language in that it had a more complex case structure and yet retained the original Germanic three-gender system. Nouns, adjectives, pronouns and certain numerals were inflected in four cases. Besides the extant nominative, there were also the genitive, dative and accusative. The gender system resembled that of modern German having masculine, feminine and neuter genders. The masculine and feminine genders were later merged into a common gender with the definite suffix n and the definite article den. In contrast with the neuter gender equivalents a and det, the verb system was also more complex. It included subjunctive and imperative moods and verbs were conjugated according to person as well as number. By the 16th century, the case and gender systems of the colloquial spoken language and the profane literature had been largely reduced to the two cases and two genders of modern Swedish. A transitional change of the Latin script in the Nordic countries was to spell the letter combination A as A and sometimes as of though it varied between persons and regions. The combination au was similarly rendered au and o became o. These three were later to evolve into the separate letters a, a and o. The first time the new letters were used in print was in A.F.F. Diafowlson's Frastelse published by Johann Gerson in 1495. Modern Swedish Modern Swedish begins with the advent of the printing press and the European Reformation. After assuming power, the new monarch Gustav Vasa ordered a Swedish translation of the Bible. The New Testament was published in 1526, followed by a full Bible translation in 1541, usually referred to as the Gustav Vasa Bible, a translation deemed so successful and influential that, with revisions incorporated in success editions. It remained the most common Bible translation until 1917. 
The main translators were Laurentius Andrea and the brothers Laurentius and Alaus Petrie. The Vasa Bible is often considered to be a reasonable compromise between old and new, while not adhering to the colloquial spoken language of its day. It was not overly conservative in its use of archaic forms. It was a major step towards a more consistent Swedish orthography. It established the use of the vowels a, a, and o, and the spelling ck, in place of kk, distinguishing it clearly from the Danish Bible, perhaps intentionally, given the ongoing rivalry between the countries. All three translators came from central Sweden which is generally seen as adding specific central Swedish features to the new Bible, though it might seem as if the Bible translation set a very powerful precedent for orthographic standards. Spelling actually became more inconsistent during the remainder of the century. It was not until the 17th century that speaking began to be discussed around the time when the first grammars were written. The spelling debate raged on until the early 19th century, and it was not until the latter half of the 19th century that the orthography reached generally acknowledged standards. Capitalization during this time was not standardized. It depended on the authors and their background. Those influenced by German capitalize all nouns, while others capitalize more sparsely. It is also not always apparent which letters are capitalized owing to the Gothic or black letter typeface which was used to print the Bible. This typeface was in use until the mid-18th century, when it was gradually replaced with a Latin typeface. Some important changes in sound during the modern Swedish period were the gradual assimilation of several different consonant clusters into the fricative and later into. There was also the gradual softening of and k into j and the fricative c before front vowels. The velar fricative was also transformed into the corresponding plosive. Contemporary Swedish The period that includes Swedish as it is spoken today is termed Nusvenska in linguistic terminology and started in the last decades of the 19th century. The period saw a democratization of the language with a less formal written form that came closer to the spoken one. The growth of a public schooling system also led to the evolution of so-called Boksvenska, especially among the working classes where speaking to some extent influenced pronunciation, particularly in official contexts. With the industrialization and urbanization of Sweden well underway by the last decades of the 19th century, a new breed of authors made their mark on Swedish literature. Many scholars, politicians and other public figures had a great influence on the new national language that was emerging. It was during the 20th century that a common, standardized national language became available to all Swedes. The orthography was finally stabilized and was almost completely uniform, with the exception of some minor deviations. By the time of the spelling reform of 1906, with the exception of plural forms of verbs and a slightly different syntax, particularly in the written language, the language was the same as the Swedish of today. The plural verb forms appeared decreasingly in formal writing into the 1950s, when their use was removed from all official recommendations. A very significant change in Swedish occurred in the late 1960s, with the so-called de reform and the u reform. Previously, the proper way to address people of the same or higher social status had been by title and surname. The use of hair, fru or froken was considered the only acceptable mode of initiating conversation with strangers of unknown occupation, academic title or military rank. The fact that the listener should preferably be referred to in the third person tended to further complicate spoken communication between members of society. In the early 20th century, an unsuccessful attempt was made to replace the insistence on titles with ni, analogous to the French vu. Ni wound up being used as a slightly less familiar form of du used to address people of lower social status. With the liberalization and radicalization of Swedish society in the 1950s and 1960s, these previously significant distinctions of class became less important, and do became the standard, even in formal and official contexts. 
though the reform was not an act of any centralized political decrees, but rather a sweeping change in social attitudes. It was completed in just a few years from the late 1960s to early 1970s. The use of knee as a polite form of address is occasionally encountered today in both the written and spoken language, particularly among younger speakers. Former language minorities from the 13th to 20th century, there were Swedish-speaking communities in Estonia, particularly on the islands along the coast of the Baltic, communities which today have all but disappeared. The Swedish-speaking minority was represented in Parliament, and entitled to use their native language in parliamentary debates. After the loss of Estonia to the Russian Empire in the early 18th century, Around 1,000 Estonian Swedish speakers were forced to march to southern Ukraine, where they founded a village, Gamelsvenskby. A few elderly people in the village still speak Swedish and observe the holidays of the Swedish calendar, although the dialect is most likely facing extinction. From 1918 to 1940, when Estonia was independent, the small Swedish community was well treated. Municipalities with a Swedish majority, mainly found along the coast, used Swedish as the administrative language in Swedish Estonian culture saw an upswing. However, most Swedish-speaking people fled to Sweden before the end of World War II, that is, before the invasion of Estonia by the Soviet Army in 1944. Only a handful of older speakers remain.